I remember I looked at the mic for the first time mm-hmm. and it was almost as though the mic wanted to say where have you been all your life I was waiting wow. for you right it was such a beautiful moment because when I heard good morning the first time on the mic I felt something cracked open within me and that was a breakthrough moment right I vividly remember and then after that there was really no looking back Hi there I am so excited for this episode of Confident Storytelling podcast because I have got a very special guest as promised my next guest is Almas Virani now Almas is a celebrated coach keynote speaker and a change maker starting with her journey when at the age of 11 she overcame her fear and gave a speech in front of 500 students to coming where she has help hundreds and thousands of people gain the confidence get their voice and speak confidently in this episode you are all going to learn the importance of mentors and also you're going to learn about the book almas has wrote along with a specific inspiring story of cassandra nazareth you're also going to learn her journey as a single mom and why it is so important to look within and be grateful for everything that we have she is working on a special program for professionals who want to become better public speaker you're going to learn about that and without further ado let's get started hello everyone welcome once again today i am very very excited because i've got a very dear friend a very accomplished speaker a trainer author and so many other things So welcome Almas I am so so excited to have you in this podcast Hi the feeling is mutual Haritosh so it's nice to have two world class speaking coaches on this podcast together Absolutely I am very very excited and I was just going through your profile not that I didn't know but you have got so many accomplishment uh, you have been a keynote speaker you have been a book author you have been a ninja podcast coach you are, you help people in finding their true voice so i'm going to ask by i'm going to start by actually asking how did it all started for you what was almas before this explorer into such an amazing thing right so you mentioned something very interesting that i help people find their voice true. and the story is that almas as a young girl had no voice at all <laughs> okay oh. mm-hmm. so i was a very shy kid an absolute introvert and if i have to be brutally honest with you i was a nagger with an inferiority complex okay i really mm-hmm. struggled to play with kids my age let alone connect or speak with people it was difficult for me i usually say this that i my favorite place was the bathroom because i would hide myself there for hours Wow. because i didn't want to associate with anybody outside and my favorite toy was a blackboard and a box of chalks and who knew the blackboard would turn into a whiteboard someday and i would be talking to you but the story really starts with my childhood where i had issues speaking and i gave my first speech at 11 is when the breakthrough happened and after that whatever has happened has been a result of choices effort hard work and a whole lot of universe working in various directions amazing amazing i love that so let's expand on that uh, you said you had your first breakthrough at the age of 11 uh, how did that go through i mean how that did that breakthrough come along like what inspired if i may say or transform you from being a shy introvert who doesn't like to socialize much to being a speaker at the age of 11 which i think is truly remarkable i i can't believe myself when i was at that age i still had lot of you know, trembling hands and shaking legs uh, so how did that transformation happen what do you think contributed to that I am conscious that this is a storytelling podcast and there definitely is a story hidden there so I'm going to explore that Absolutely This happened through a very mysterious chain of events okay I remember I was sitting on in class okay I was sitting on this bench the teacher walks in you can imagine her she was this lovely fair short lady with mm. a bindi and a sari 
I remember her walking in and looking at us, asking this question: "Who would like to give the Independence Day speech this year?" And for some odd reason, she looked at me, Haritosh. Mm-hmm. All I did was hid myself. I wanted to hide. She looked around again and she said, "Who wants to give the Independence Day speech this year?" There was pin drop silence. It was almost like the audience wanted to say, "Please, we're not interested." And for some reason, she looked at me again, mm-hmm. and I. kid i remember literally ducking myself and there was a girl sitting next to me and i remember she nudged me and she said she's looking at you don't hide get up and mm. raise your hand and that one raise of hand changed everything for me haritosh so i somehow managed to raise my hand i volunteered to give that speech and i was a good writer good student so i would write very well right. i wrote the speech i practiced it for days and you should have been there with me as i climbed those stairs with hands that were sweaty with jaws that with the jaw that was locked with knees that were locked with the throat that was parched and i really wanted to speak but it was very very difficult and i remember i looked at the mic for the first time mm. and it was almost as though the mic wanted to say where have you been all your life i was waiting wow. for you right it was such a beautiful moment because when i heard good morning the first time on the mic i felt something cracked open within me and that was a breakthrough moment right i vividly remember and then after that there was really no looking back uske baad then things changed i volunteered to give speeches in school and college and the rest is history but what i wanted to know is that the two and a half minutes of that first speech were not easy right i fumbled i made mistakes what changed really were the 500 students in the audience that started clapping for me after those two and a half minutes a girl mm-hmm. with severe inferiority complex got her validation for the first time Wow. and i think that acceptance validation appreciation changed a whole lot for me then wow that's amazing incredible uh, i've heard that story but every time you narrate that story i can pictureize myself in the audience and uh, i think this is part of all of us that you know we have gone through similar journeys and when we hear from somebody who is probably a inch ahead who did something which was very very bold at that time which was something which we might have not raised our hand uh but that's when we could relate i could sense that you know what what that breakthrough that the word that you said that you know, the the first hello on the mic and and good morning uh on the mic and getting the response from 500 student giving you validation this is pure pure gold to say and uh, what do you think and i think I have to say this because I also con- I also dedicate a lot of my success to my mentors and coaches and teachers. What do you think uh, is the contribution of that teacher for identifying you out of that whole class um, and and indirectly nudging you to take up this thing? What do you think has that contribution been to your life? I think it's been one of the biggest contributions of my life, right? Yeah. If that didn't happen this would have not happened today. Totally. So I really owe a lot not just to the teacher but the girl next to me who yes. nudged me to the students who embraced that speech with my flaws to every person who encouraged me along the way. I think there has been a massive contribution of a whole lot of people to get me to where I am today. Very nice. Very very true, very true. I I remember and this podcast is not about me but anyways i go and tell it. i remember i was i think in class 9th or something doing a private coaching and i i come from hindi medium background and there was this english class where my teacher asked question like you and i knew the answer but i had gone through a experience where i was very low in confidence and and i didn't had the courage to raise my hand but he came straight looked into me and said to oh, haritosh I know you know the answer. Why don't you answer that? And uh-huh. that was the breakthrough moment for me. Wow. Like, wow. Wow. How does he know that I know the answer? <laughs> But somehow I think being on the other side now like you are a trainer coach and and me being a uh, a public speaking and storytelling coach somehow we we sense that we get that sixth sense okay there is a potential in in that student in that 
trainee and we just he he or she just need a little bit of nudge to come back do you agree to that absolutely absolutely sometimes it's just that one little nudge one stroke one pat on the back one little thing that someone says that could be life changing for us absolutely totally agree so let's move on so you had this breakthrough happen at the age of 11 and then you never stop so i want to now i i'm asking you to actually post i <laughs> if i may say but tell about i what all amazing things you have done i know you've done a lot of things uh, but i would like to know some of the major highlights of your journey so far um i think there's still a long way to go right but things that have given me joy happiness and i feel like i've been in service doing some of those things uh one of them has been this book that mm. i co-authored with someone and yeah. this book is called change makers and this book actually captures stories of 11 women that brought about a change in um, or or reforms in india and globally right Mm-hmm. and what i what is fascinating about doing this piece of work is that the girl who had no voice was able to amplify 11 mm-hmm. voices right wow. and that for me i think was a real piece of service and real piece of work so it was just fascinating capturing those stories so that's one thing that i feel mm-hmm. uh, i want to sort of highlight and talk about yeah Absolutely. So you you said that there are eleven powerful stories. I love to have at least one story out of that. Which I mean, I know when you have eleven, so it's going to be very very hard to choose which one to choose. But if I have to, and you have no you have no option, which one story you would like to tell to our you no know, viewers and listeners? Right. So the story is about a, a lady called Cassandra Nazareth. and here in mumbai there is a very famous locality called the ra forest and there are about 22 villages if i'm not mistaken in that forest and there are small tribes that live in this forest mm-hmm. now cassandra is an activist who used to do a lot of work with the women the tribal women in this forest and there was a day when she was taking a tour and while she was on tour she realized two of the villages did not have electricity mhm and she thought maybe there is an electricity problem and the people there told her that no we've never had electricity there so she was really surprised to see the kids studying with candles they were literally wow. studying with candles around them and she asked them you've never had electricity and they said no we've never had electricity she was pretty alarmed because mumbai is a buzzing city and there's a there was there's a very popular mall right across this locality and she said if they can have electricity that they're wasting through the night why don't why doesn't this village have electricity i got to do something about it mm-hmm. so she started a petition on change.org and uh, she 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 kind of fought through this whole thing very relentlessly she went to the right authorities she got more than 65000 signatures wow. she started this campaign online and she kept going no matter what right and after i think about a year long struggle she actually managed to get electricity to those two villages wow and this is so phenomenal as a story because she lives in a house full of luxury right she's mm-hmm. got she's got everything in her house but to be able to feel something for someone else's cause is a huge thing and when you read cassandra nazareth's story the entire story and you unpack her life you will understand why she did what she did what makes her this change maker why is she so inspired by communities and why she wants to help communities so i think who we are today is a result of a lot of things that have happened to us since our childhood and that somehow becomes the reason for us to give back to the society so that's a very inspiring story and i would really urge if anyone who's listening to this podcast to pick up the book and read not just that story all the stories are amazing in the book yeah amazing amazing i i can feel that and truly you mentioned that that whatever we are is just the tip of the iceberg because we have gone through so much of experience so much of learning right. so much of conditioning and that shapes us so people typically see the only the tip but there is there's a whole iceberg which is lying underneath awesome so So you you wrote this book that was amazing. I mean, you compiled the stories and and put that. 
what were the other highlights of your journey because i know you are there are many highlights uh, but i would like to hear from you what is the other highlight from your journey right so a lot of people like to hear the fancy stuff and i feel that success is not just defined by your material success Absolutely. and what you achieved right there's a lot more and i think some of the lessons that i've learned along the way in my journey have been very very powerful so i'm a single mom and raising a child alone i think has been one of the bravest and the most fascinating experiences of my life mm-hmm. i remember walking out of a marriage when ayan my son was about 3 and a half years old and i didn't have a full time job i didn't have too much of family support and i think that was a time when i took a real jump in my life so i've taken many jumps in life haritosh yeah uh, some uh, you you might call me crazy but somehow i get the strength to go out and do weird things and i wouldn't say this was weird but it was definitely very very brave mm. and uh, i realized that when you decide to take a bold step in life when you want to rebuild your life when your intention is strong the universe is going to conspire and give you the resources that you need right yeah. i was broken broken it wasn't very easy for me to lift my pieces and start on a new journey but i think angels came along and helped me throughout so i think the most fascinating thing that i've done personally haritosh has been this whole journey of self transformation and healing within mm-hmm. okay and that's not an easy journey because the more you explore it there's so much more to do Absolutely. and we live in an age and time when spirituality is bombarded from all dimensions in different aspects and you don't know which way to look and the only way actually is within look within so for me the whole journey has been to look within discover who i am and to be able to be grateful for the, the beautiful life and the gifts that i have so i think that is something that i truly want to share unless you are asking for anything in particular no, no, but no, it's fine. my my lessons in life truly are i would say are blessings that i've had and achievements that i've had every scar that i've had that i've been able to turn into a smile i think has been uh, one of my achievements and there have been plenty of them along the way absolutely no this is this is perfect i would say i think a yeah, lot of time when i say that uh, i was anyways going to come to that because we all boast a lot about success uh, but yeah. most of the times we forget that we have and most of the people who have been successful have had some scars some uh, struggles that they undergo and is is those lesson out of those scars out of those less out of those experiences that uh, shape and made them what they are so thank you so much and uh, i honestly did not know that part of you so uh, honestly thank you for sharing that uh, vulnerable part but at the same there, time there, so there is no there is no excitement with predictability right there has to be something that's unpredictable in life absolutely absolutely and it does take a lot of courage for the kind of steps that you took uh, in your journey so now tell us more about what you are doing right now what are the things that excite you for your uh, upcoming 2023 end of 2023 and we are going straight into 2024 i like i still feel like it's just starting 2023 but when you yeah, look, yeah, it's like already <laughs> november so what's exciting thing uh, that has been for 2023 and what's the major plan for 2024 as well right so all of us these days hear about this term ikigai my purpose in life and some right. of us take it a little too seriously <laughs> now after a long journey i've realized ikigai is to live life in this moment but having said that work wise if i have to look at something that i really want to contribute to the world to the world too it is i want to help people speak better right mm-hmm. and of course there has this this is not just happened overnight over the last two decades my life has literally trans transpired in such a way that i have been put in forums places positions where i've had to inspire people to speak better to be better right i spent about uh, 15 years in the corporate world mm. i was leading learning and development and then the last two decades i've coached more than 45000 people and all of this has not just happened because i had to do it it's also because i wanted to do it right there was a part of me that wanted to contribute to this aspect so i want to help people speak better and i want to create more structured programs and forums for people to be able to do that 
okay so i have a couple of programs and uh, i invite anyone who really wants to take their speaking to the next level sometimes not sometimes actually a coach will always help you get there faster absolutely right? and there are coaches like haritosh um, and me and and many more coaches who sort of studied this at a deeper level and we could help you so the program that i have um, is for there's one program that i have for people who really want to create more magic on stage and i want to kind of expand that a little bit more reach yes. out to more audiences people who really want to now step up and stand out because we live in a time haritosh where attention spans are limited Absolutely. and you want to be able to create more engagement with the audience otherwise you've lost them so i want to do more work in the in that space of creating more presence on stage so that's one large part of what i want to do the other part that i really want to focus on is reach out to a lot of a lot of corporate employees right who kind of are struggling with not standing out or not shining mm. who have great technical skills and you find you will find a lot of people who are really good at what they do but there's only a handful that get the credit that stand out right that are spoken about that get promoted what about the others that don't and what they really need is to be empowered with powerful professional communication so that is one big agenda for me i want to really empower the masses to be able to do that especially in a country like india you have so many people that don't get jobs mm-hmm. especially just because they're not able to communicate effectively right if i can make a difference to their life and help them communicate better i would be making actually creating a big impact in their lives right so Absolutely. yeah these are some agendas that i have for 2023 and beyond i i love that i love that and and especially the last part when you said about and i totally agree being in a corporate world for close to 17 years now uh, i have seen a lot of time people uh, who are very well deserving who know stuff in and out but just because they're not able to articulate just because they're not able to project their voice in the right way they don't get the credit and i think and this is a bigger problem not only for individuals but i think as a as a country for us indians i have seen because i've been almost now a uh, close to a decade i've been living out of india is no way that the people outside uh, have more technical skills than us the only thing we currently lack is the way we project ourselves we market ourselves we we talk in front of the foreign clients and if we can upgrade ourselves to the next level in that there's no stopping for us as individual or as no as the companies but also as the economy so there is a, there is a larger narrative that we have to set it up for i truly believe if for india to go from say number 5 in the world for economies to number 3 number 2 one of the things that we do really need to work upon is the way we articulate the way we market the way we sell because that will get us more business more conversion more sales more jobs more money and that's how we will contribute to the larger economic of our country as well wow very very well said but i'd like to add something there so sure. i think the 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 thing is that we're we also lack the mindset at times yes. not just the skill set right absolutely if we were able to realize that communication is a lot more than just english language mm-hmm. a lot can change for us so the mindset and the skill set if we change these two things with communication you are bang on when you say that it could really contribute a lot to the economy as well and that is the larger goal for me i really want to help people communicate better and once again i want to reiterate communication has got to do a lot more than language per se language is absolutely. a medium of expression right it's it's absolutely. just that yeah absolutely i i totally agree to that and that's why i also the language is just a tool but not the end goal so it doesn't matter whether you're speaking in english hindi french uh, punjabi marathi language is just a tool and and the, the tool is very very important you need to sharpen the tools but yeah. 
that's not the end goal the end goal communication as they say is what is inside you what is the message inside you should reach the receiver if the technical uh, definition of communication if we take so i know there is a lot of these uh, uh misnomer going on right now that yes it has to be english yes we agree because if we want to become international we need to know english but knowing english will not make you a better communicator or speaker there are things which are way beyond just language you have to understand the 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 small way for example let me give you couple example for example the way you pause that has got nothing to do with the language you have to take a pause whether you're speaking english or hindi but yeah taking the right pause at the right time can make or break your proposals break your sales break your interviews as well and it and pause has no language as such. so that's just one small example so it is beyond the language so absolutely well said and um, to your earlier point one of our common coaches craig valentine says that the skill set without mindset leads to upset and i 100% agree to that because if you have the best skill set but you don't have the right mindset you're going to probably utilize it for for the ways that you won't be proud of uh, so that's why absolutely agree mindset is actually more important than skill set itself yeah so i think that i'm ready i'm ready to do a lot more because like i said the last two decades for me has been so much of skill set development and of course because of my own journey there has been yeah. so much of a mindset shift and that that combination i think is rare so i am ready to serve more people but i think uh, many a times i notice that people are scared to take the plunge themselves we have resources available we have yeah. so much available but we really don't like i know a lot of people who just listen to this podcast listen to this wonderful story and go back and do nothing <laughs> the whole idea is to take action right Absolutely. stories are good but if they but the people who are actually part of the stories are the ones that have taken action if you don't take action you're going to stay there absolutely absolutely can't agree to and actually if you li- create your stories in such a way that it can uh, initiate it can help you execute it can help you transform that's where it become a uh, a uh, story worth sharing otherwise yes we all have stories uh, which is yeah good to listen but the true stories i believe are the one which makes you take action and that is why when you tell stories you also need to think about who is listening the story and what are they going to do afterwards that actually helps you craft better stories so mm. i i do want to ask one question because this is very very uh when i had these experiences i i get this uh joy and that is when you see your coaches transform and right. and you remember their journey uh, right. i sometimes get very emotional so tell us a uh, one probably example of when you saw one of your coaches or mentee truly transform and what was that for you wow there have been quite a few of them but one recent one that comes to my mind is this uh, this guy who struggled to speak all his life mhm he would find it so difficult to even have a conversation one to one with a stranger and he was in a sales job and somehow he would manage to get sales now he got into this position where he had to participate in a conference and give a talk he found me on linkedin and he said i need to start today he was mm-hmm. desperate to start working he was ready to pay whatever amount i quoted he said i just need to start i am really scared i'm going to be presenting to this a huge group of people they are my clients they are the best people in the industry and it's really about my reputation do something i said don't worry we'll get there and we worked together for i think we had 20 days before that talk and we worked together uh for that talk we did a whole lot of sessions we did a lot of work i did a lot of work to help him calm down his nerves <laughs> we did skill set mindset we made sure yeah. he was not upset we did all of that <laughs> and yeah. then uh, i still remember i did this meditation with him in the morning before he could go on stage and as soon as he got off the stage he messaged me i'm going to quote this in hindi and then i will translate it he said almas many stage phad diya which means <laughs> Almas I rocked the stage if 
that is Hill an okay yeah. translation right yeah. so and, and that gave me so much joy so much yeah. joy because here there was somebody who put his trust in me and then he said now i'm ready to deliver many more talks bring it on what's yeah. next right what's next? so a lot of people work with me then want to line up more opportunities for them to talk and that is real transformation because when people work with you you don't so i usually say this you don't invest in training you invest in transformation with me because ultimately this is about transformation and you know haritosh the best part about the work that we do is this transformation is not temporary it's not like Absolutely. weight loss that yeah. i'm going to eat <laughs> something sweet for the next few days and voila the weight is going to come back that won't happen once you transform the way you speak it is a muscle memory it's going to change forever so, so yeah it, it does give you a lot of joy when you see those kind of yeah. testimonials or those yeah. kind of messages from people yeah Absolutely I I love that story and I could visualize that person speaking from stage and and going from like no the first where he is so anxious so nervous to going and really killing it at stage if we have to do literal transformation killing at the stage and really uh, excited and and that's what I think uh, we have gone through the journey as coaches so we know what that means or, or or to say what it means to be on the other side where you actually get excited every time you get a speaking opportunity every every time you get to podcast with people like you you get excited versus being a stage where you are so nervous like oh this is another thing i have to do so that's where it goes from pressure to privilege if i may say to and that's uh, truly incredible so almost one more thing which i want to cover is uh, I have interviewed so many people and and it's my honor and privilege to meet so many people but very few uh, people have done really good when it comes to podcasting mm. and being you a ninja podcasting uh, coach I wanted to hear from you the three things that anyone who's you know who already have a podcast or is planning to launch a podcast in 2024 people have those bucket list what do you uh, suggest for those people right so i'm glad you brought that up yeah i would love to i, I have this passion for podcasting and i would love to help anyone who really wants to start a podcast because again it's about amplifying your voice right so if you feel you have a message or you're curious about something please go grab the mic you're really going to thank yourself a few episodes later so let me give you a couple of ideas you mentioned three things the first thing is spend 60% of your time in production and 40% on marketing mm-hmm. here's a mistake that most people make that they spend too much time producing the content but no time left in marketing if it's not visible no one's going to buy it right so it's very important that you do that the second thing is consistency because the podcasting algorithm works on consistency so it's very important that you don't drop the ball otherwise you're going to lose listeners and you're going to have that impact because unlike your instagram followers or following unfollowing your podcast listeners are very different if you have a listener you're fortunate that listener is waiting for the next episode and if they don't find you then they're going to find somebody else <laughs> they can listen okay. to So the second thing is consistency, right? And the third thing I want to talk to you about is please use the power of the content that's inside of the podcast. Use it for various purposes, repurpose it. There is so much that you can do with one podcast and I can't begin to tell you how much of a reach you can have with just one episode, yeah? Mm-hmm. So try to pick up audiograms from a podcast try to pick up quotes from a podcast try to make reels out of that try to do igtvs out of that there's so much that you can create from one episode so don't worry about creating social media content when you have a podcast like i said you're spending a lot of time producing that one episode but we're not marketing that enough mm. so try to use as much material as you can from each episode and market it use it awesome thank you so much and and really i i could sense that i do have to take my podcast game to the next level because yes i have been i am being honest myself yeah, i have spent a lot of time in producing a lot of podcasts i think this might be 63rd or 64th episode oh, wow you've done those many episodes huh yeah 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 
so so that's going to be yeah by the time this goes live that's probably going to be 64th episode or so uh, so i've produced a lot of uh, podcast episode but i've not done a really good job when it comes to marketing and that's what i'm going to take away from this conversation to really market and i'm um, i've learned a few things from you already i'm going to implement that because yeah implement without implementation nothing is permanent so absolutely thank you for sharing that now uh, so almost uh, this uh, you mentioned about a new upcoming speaking program that you're doing called ninja speaking program the name itself is so fascinating so <laughs> i would love to know more about it and how can people be part of it you do you know who is a ninja by the way what is this whole ninja idea what do you think it is i just i just know that when you come when it comes to ninja it's more of a warrior who's all rounder or something like that but yeah, honestly i don't know too much about the ninja things Uh, I do whenever the ninja things come there there are like <laughs> cartoons <laughs> with all the x cross and all of those things so that's what but uh, yeah high level speaking what i know is ninja is somebody who's more of an all rounder if i say in cricket terms he knows how to bat ball and field but i i'm going to let the expert talk now <laughs> right so talking of ex- experts a ninja is an excellent warrior who learns from the best experts right mm. so ninja is someone who is excellent at what they do right excellent skills a lot of practice really fine skills that's who a ninja is and they have masters they work with right and therefore the whole ninja speaking program because every time i do do a program the whole idea is to bring in the right set of experts and make you masters at what you do we mm. want you to really develop the skill because the thing is that gyan is available everywhere this free information everywhere why right. would you spend time money energy with me i want to bring that transformation in your life right and that's the whole idea so this program is a 3 month program and it has been designed for people who really want to take their public speaking to the next level so there is a formula that i use in the program and it is called the vams formula so vams stand, stands for voice audience message and stage right i feel like these are the four pillars mm-hmm. that any ninja speaker needs to become a ninja speaker yeah <laughs> so voice is really about using 100% of the capacity of your voice using your voice distinctly and and there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into amplifying your actual voice right mm-hmm. so that is one pillar the second pillar is the audience and i'm sure you know this more than anybody else as a storyteller that whatever you're saying is for the audience and not for you and many or many a times we forget that so how do you really connect with the audience using a lot of world class speaking tools we try to create the whole audience segment then there is message which is your overall message how do you structure mm-hmm. so there are a lot of people who don't know how to structure their content they're either all over the place with too many stories or there are people that that cannot speak beyond two points or two lines there are, there's no story so how do you structure your message and finally how do you own the stage mm-hmm. so own the stage has a lot of other parameters like body language godfather like confidence how do you really stand out when you are in in front of a, in front of an audience all of that fancy stuff is there but what i focus on in the stage parameter is how do you become a mindful speaker mm. because that is when you can truly express otherwise your focus will be on impressing people and the and you focus more on the pressure than the privilege pressure on so this is formula called the vams formula which is voice audience message and stage it's a 3 month program it's an online live program where you have a lot of engagement it's an experiential program there are a lot of activities and there are assignments during this 3 month journey you have an accountability partner that you work with and then you also have implementation calls so it's a power packed program for mm-hmm. anyone who wants to take their presentation and public speaking to the next level Awesome awesome so anybody who want to take their public speaking to the next level you must go for ninja speaking program i know the value that almas brings when she does anything so highly highly recommend and thank you so much thank if you, people Arsh. if people want to connect with you otherwise uh, how can they reach out to you so i am on instagram coach almas virani i am also on linkedin almas virani these are two platforms where i'm usually present so you can reach awesome. out to me 
Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Almas. I cannot thank you enough for agreeing to do this and sharing the nugget, sharing your powerful, vulnerable, and most importantly, impactful story. So truly grateful to have you in this podcast. Vulnerability is the most important skill of a good speaker, isn't it? But Absolutely. anyway, whatever I spoke was uh, from the heart. Thank you once again for inviting me, Hardosh. Thanks. Thank you. So that. my friend was coach almas virani if you like this episode do subscribe to this podcast and share your reviews and i will make sure that i am going to bring more such amazing guests in the podcast stay tuned for confident storytelling podcast thank you so much